Hello, I'm going to put this 04 to 09 Toyota Prius electric power steering in this 1966 Mustang. Stay tuned. The reason I went with this, this project is my friend Jeff has a awesome 66 Mercury Comet and he put a Nissan unit in his Comet and he loves it. It's been there for years, giving him no problems. His brother uh, had Jeff install a uh, aftermarket unit in his 66 Fastback Mustang and he loves it, but it's 1400 bucks. This I purchased for, uh, not including this extra box, for $220 on eBay. The Prius is several hundred pounds more than my Mustang, so I'm confident it could handle the car. And Wade explained the wiring a little bit better. So I knew that uh, this little black wire in the top left corner of this connector is uh, the ignition on. The black stripe wire is uh, negative directly to the battery, and the white wire is power directly to the battery. I used a 30 amp circuit breaker with a reset button on it. I don't know how many amps this needs, but this is 10 gauge wire. So I used all 10 gauge wire, soldered copper connections, and I connected that 30 amp uh, circuit breaker directly to the positive side of my starter solenoid. I got that at a marine store. People use them uh, for trolling motors. Uh, my friend Len, who's a retired out of body man, explained to me how this is a collapsible column. He says sometimes when you have a car you're working on, it's got a, a blown airbag, the column can be collapsed too. It's got pinch points and it slides down, so a little extra safety. I found you can uh, flip this motor 180 degrees with these two bolts, and that hides the wire up above the column for how I installed it. I started this project by grinding off these superfluous components that I don't need, and of course leaving this fat sleeve on there. If you, uh, if you buy one of these, they usually come just like you see, minus this extra box. And this one happened to come with extra tailpiece that I believe that gentleman Wade needed for installing on his old Ford because he, he's also installed a rack and pinion and that rack and pinion is almost straight down from the firewall. So he needed that extra U-joint and this extra tailpiece so you would too, if you have rack and pinion. I don't, so I don't use that. And I end up cutting this U-joint off. And this is the only U-joint that I need. When you buy one of these, make sure it has the wires. You can buy them like this with no connectors. You can't wire it to the car without the connector in there. That's all I can think of right now. So let's get started. Steering shaft won't come out with all this car in the way. I decided to unbolt it from the frame, the box from the frame, and just slide that thing up in, up in the hole, and I'll cut it extra long inside, and then I can slide it out the bottom here. My reciprocating saw with a new metal cutting blade worked pretty slick. Here's a similar steering shaft to mine. This is also a Ford, and I find that this shaft is three quarters of an inch in diameter and down here's where the gearbox is under your hood in my case i'll be cutting this shaft roughly seven inches and then since this is three quarters inch diameter which i find is only slightly bigger than the inside of this hollow tube where i removed the last u-joint on the toyota column i drilled this out my three quarter inch bit and my cordless drill. I just clamped this in the vise, you can see. And uh, it wasn't easy. And you had to be very steady, of course. And uh, this is, again, where the I cut the original U-joint off. And then leaving this fat part of this shaft. And my Ford steering rod slides right in there and I can weld that on something to note this metal bracket was mounted behind this this bolt you're not going to need this bracket so if you reinsert this bolt to keep any 
debris or, or, or whatever out of the unit because it's open to the inside of these, to the moving mechanisms here. Uh, you need you need to space it out with a couple of thick washers that are at least as thick as that mounting surface from this plate. Otherwise, that bolt will strike the moving components in here, and it will prevent the shaft from turning. I have the steering box installed. I measured from here, from the furthest out part of the of the steering gear box. I measured out on the Ford steering input shaft six and a quarter inches. You can go a little bit either way because there's adjustment inside with that Toyota spline and that spline is welded right where my finger is touching. So it's basically in the center of the firewall. And here's a, a center link, drag link uh, I got from CJ's. You can get them anywhere. This replaced the old, the old uh, power steering operation that had the big slave cylinder here and leaking everywhere. Uh, you can see the weld. Right about, right about in the middle of the firewall, that six and a quarter inch forward input shaft that's coming out of the gearbox is going into the Toyota splined sleeve where I drilled it out three quarters of an inch and it's in there about five eighths of an inch, it's inserted and that's taking into account that six and a quarter that includes that. Nice thing about this is before I took measurements, this, you can see how this U-joint will slide back and forth on the spline. So I centered it. It's not centered anymore, but it's close. It's actually sticking in the U-joint just a little bit more than center. But it gives you about an inch in either direction to fine tune your adjustment to get this motor unit under the dash in the right spot. Because you gotta miss this metal. So if you use some other unit other than Toyota, well, you just gotta get it the right length. So I was able to slide this back a little bit. It'll go back a little bit farther, but it really, this is like the optimal place for it to be. Now, the angle of this, you can see there's space there. Say, Why don't you raise that motor up? Well, you can't because, because that hits the opposite side of the clutch and brake pedal brace. That's, this is where it will be. If you use a Toyota Prius power steering unit, it's going to be like this, and it's going to have a little bit of an upward angle on the motor just like this. Now, in case you took your column apart without measuring, right behind this this mount here is, is the metal from the back of the dashboard here on the bottom. And this is 16 inches from that edge to where the Ford, end of the Ford input shaft is, roughly where my finger is. I, I don't know exactly, but, you know, it's several inches longer than what this Toyota is now. So I'm going to cut this off and weld the the Ford spline on the end of it. When I welded that Ford shaft into that Toyota shaft, uh, I left a pitman arm on the gearbox and I set it up on the bench and I was able to just turn the pitman arm and watch the end of the shaft and I adjust it with a rubber mallet and, and keep rotating it and keep tack welding all the way around until I saw no run out. I didn't use a dial indicator, but I could see no visible run out and I think down here that's fairly crucial but it it's not as crucial as, as up above where the steering wheel is going to be. I just poured that water in there. The stove ain't moving at all. It's frightened water. You're freaking me out man. Since I'm going to have to cut my column somewhere around here these wires need to come out and that's easy enough. This connector I just transferred how they're wired in the connector onto that piece of paper and then slide a little screwdriver down inside and you can squeeze the little tip of the wire connector pinch it with a screwdriver and pull the wire right out the back of this connector and your wires will slide out of the column i don't believe this one will be a problem i think it'll fit out that slot all right, ladies and germs, I cut this upper tube off at 13 and 3 eighths inches. Uh, this is the factory hole where the wires go through. When you cut it off, you're going to find this channel in there for the wires. And that's going to cut off down here. And up here is just two spot welds. I just put a screwdriver in there and give it a little pop, and this came right out. Uh, this is that nylon sleeve that I talked about uh, where it goes inside this tube, and that's where your 
you're clamped underneath the dashboard. And this is a tight fit. This is the way it is to slide this collar over these wires, but it, it, it goes. It's very tight. Um, so the, I cut this hole so the wires will come out here roughly in this area, and you won't see those when you're in the driver's seat because they're a little bit on the top left corner of the shaft, and they'll come out behind this motor and plug into the Ford connector. I cut the Ford spline end off at five and a quarter inches, and I cut the Toyota spline end off at seven eighths of an inch from this, from this edge. At, that's at a point on this spline or the shaft from the Toyota, which it's roughly the same diameter as the Ford. So when I weld that on, uh, it's gonna be roughly, well, it'll be 16 inches from a measuring point under the dash that I'll show you what I measured from to the end of this spline shaft, which is exactly what the factory was. It's pretty much ready to install. I'm just gonna put my little uh, wiring block back in. I left this outer shaft a little bit short here. I kind of realize that it doesn't have to be touching there. It's not gonna help. And that way I can ensure that I have my one and three quarter inches from the end of the sp sh spline shaft to the edge of this collar. This is my block, I'm gonna put my wires back in. The schematic there. And what I determined, maybe I'm just, just overkill telling you this, but these little barbs gotta be pulled back out again. So what I determined is the easiest thing to do. Some of them are in so far, you can't get behind it. So I just go in the back here and I pry it up and bend it. And then just straighten it out with a needle nose pliers. So we end up with Something like that. Okay, here we are fully assembled. And this this original outer tube I cut off, it's about 11 inches. It's got a rubber boot on it that seals around the, around the gearbox under the hood. So it's keeping the weather out. And of course, this is the factory inside gasket, if you will. And it's, helping out as well you can cut it in however long you want i just wanted access to this bolt so i can take this whole power steering unit out easy just by taking that one bolt off and that shaft of course is welded right in the middle of the firewall there to the ford input shaft in in the column here you need something to go around the outside diameter of the toyota column and fit snugly inside the inside diameter of the Ford tube. You know, something like this that you're gonna cut in half and then maybe tape back on to slide your tube over. I just happened to find a nylon item like this that came off a, a 66 Comet column. And it happened to fit so close that all I had to do was a couple a few layers of, of electrical tape on the outside to make it snug in there so you can clamp this securely under the dashboard. Just any solid item, the vent controller here needs to be moved over because it's hitting the side of the power steering unit. And I got a, the mounting plate wedged under the dash and it's pretty solid. I might just leave it there. It's not interfering with any wires or anything like that. So for bracing the motor, one inch cold steel from a big box builder supply store here in the Midwest and and I bent it 90 degrees heated it up in a vise and pounded it down bent it 90 degrees of course it's painted and, and trimmed uh, but I drilled a hole through this double layer of steel underneath the dash because it's very rigid and you need that brace to counteract the torque of the motor as you turn the steering wheel you have to brace it so I, I removed the bolt here that came on the unit and I, and I just put a longer bolt on and there's a nut on the back side here. So this is really solid. As I tested it, that motor doesn't move at all. Now the, the box mounting the, the control box under there, here's my extra box. What I did was I kept this cut a little bit here and here and fatigue bent this piece off. And then I used this there's a factory hole in my dashboard that uh, I don't know what it's for, but it was perfect for a, a bolt of you know, that diameter. 
and this this is just mounted right up in there like that through that factory hole and i got the bolt sticking out into the through the firewall it's not on right now pretty firm ignition on should take about 10 seconds for the unit to recognize power there it goes feels good feels perfect try to give you a view from inside the car what it looked like mounted under there as tommy boy says we're driving along and driving along <sighs> you gotta love that movie you don't really see it i'm guessing i don't have seats in here you don't really see it from here there you are my little electric friend and from the passenger seat like that so that's what you get so after about 500 miles of driving uh here's my impressions i think my my turning radius has improved a bit it seems to turn pretty sharp it doesn't the wheel doesn't return to center on its own it does a little bit more when you're you know at speed but it will never completely return to center on its own there's no noticeable bump steer on rough roads it's really rock solid the one thing i'm starting to get used to is you know if i if i uh, start the car and just roll away immediately and i forget often that it's a six second delay that's exactly what this one is for the electric steering to kick in so i'm getting used to that you can still steer the car but you realize your your input needs to be increased substantially and right away so <laughs> i'm getting better at that all in all i do like this system it, it really works nice and it cleans up under the hood too not to mention no more leaks <laughs>